do you have the maturity and the stamina to be dependent don't you know that dependence is strength indeed john 21 let me show you something jesus said john 21 let's start from verse 15 mm. Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? He was probing into his love life. Let's go to verse 17. That's what I'm looking for something in verse 17. He said, feed my sheep, 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, please look up if you're a Christian. When thou was young, Thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not. That means the proof of maturity and stamina in this kingdom is when you can reach out and allow another hold your hand and lead you, sometimes even to places you do not want to go. There is a story in the bible in luke chapter 15 now is a good time to start that story from verse 11 a core lesson before i now wrap up with the power that is in sonship comes from this story it is the most classic expression of fatherhood and sonship a parable given by jesus himself the Bible says, in fact, when the Bible says there was a certain man, it means it actually happened. Is that true? Now follow the story. He said, a certain man had two sons. How many sons? Whoever has sons is called what? Father. Is that true? So this father had two sons. You know, the story of the prodigal son is so powerful because it shows us what happens when you are under the influence of fatherhood what happens when you rebel and how to come back if you so wish very beautiful rendition it it leaves it leaves you with the option of choosing by showing you putting together many actions versus the consequences that follow now let's learn from scripture the younger of them said to his father give me the portion of goods that followed to me and he divided and he divided unto them his living watch this the first mistake that this man made was that he switched from stewardship to ownership in this kingdom owners are rebels we do not own anything in this kingdom ownership is proof of rebellion right from genesis you may freely eat but it is not yours first corinthians chapter 4 when you read from verse 1 and 2 the bible says let a man so account of us as stewards you know faithful ministers and stewards of the mysteries of god verse 2 says moreover first corinthians 4 verse 2 now moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful the reason why many of us today respectfully speaking are depressed and going through all kinds of things is because we have assumed a responsibility that was not within our job description ownership is costly you do not have the power to be an owner owner means you have to maintain god relieved you from the burden of maintenance by making you a steward now let me when i say ownership of course physically we have things trusted to us and we must work i mean ownership in terms of the responsibility of your life the, there are so many things you cannot do and god said leave ownership to me the earth is the lord's hold on hold on hold on hold on don't rush don't rush there are four things that makes anyone lord for you to be lord according to that scripture you must have dominion and absolute control over four things number one the earth number two the resources called the fullness number three the mindset that governs that territory and then number four the inhabitants whoever has this must be lord then the ultimate test of lordship 
is that whoever owns the earth must be able to exit himself and come back by himself every other king who claimed to be lord when he died he did not have the power to come back are you seeing now because you see according to the law of territory when you exit this earth you can't bring yourself back it will take someone who is in the earth to call you back if you must come and here is jesus no mortal man was calling him back in prayer no which is a violation to the law because for everyone who rose from the dead there was somebody a human person with a body who called him even jesus called lazarus is that true now who called jesus back that was proof that he was lord the man who can exit the earth and return back that's not what i'm teaching i just thought to just just drum that scripture it was while he was coming back that this statement came lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory and the gate said no we're not used to this there is nobody who is authorizing that entrance and they ask the question who is this king of glory question this was the reply who is this king of glory question the reply was the lord he never said god the lord lord means absolute owner the lord who is strong and mighty the lord who is mighty in battle and the gates opened and he came with honor and dignity and he arose we're getting there when we talk about the power where your topic is coming from because when you really understand the power that sons carry you will see that walking in the supernatural is not just privy to a group of people you can never truly be a blessing when you are not supernatural it's not about being anointed it's about a commitment to being a blessing so dependence dependence something happened to jacob that is a lesson jacob walked with god to a point where god named himself after jacob now let me tell you this one of the ways god honors men is to name himself after them the god of abraham the god of isaac that is not a gift that is a reward that a man can so walk with god that he will have a personal name it's a depth of relationship and captured in that name will be a dimension of god that every time it is invoked god will act in a certain way as a memorial to that person are you getting what i'm teaching now yes the manifestation of the god of abraham is not the same as the god of isaac it's not the same as the God of Jacob. No. So Jacob is about to teach us how he was able to secure that level of intimacy with God. In chapter 28, the Bible says he came to a place called Luz to sleep. And when he lay down on a stone, he had a dream and he saw a ladder that was connecting the heavens and the earth. Angels ascending and descending. At the top of it was God himself. And he began to speak and tell him prophetically about his destiny. Jacob woke up from his vision and he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this must be the house of God, you know, the gate of heaven and so on and so forth. And he was careless with that encounter. Next scene, he would pay the price for 20 years in Laban's house for trivializing such an encounter. Now in chapter 32, God comes again. This time around, Jacob is wiser because pain can be a blessing. There are certain things that only pain can bring and teach. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. Hallelujah. Now he was prepared. He had seen the value of an encounter with God. And in chapter 32, the Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle. When he was alone, a man came to him 
now watch the encounter and he held him and began to wrestle with that man and the man said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me how did he bless him number one what is your name i am jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed and then the bible says he touched the hollow you see that that he is able to stand strong independent of any aid is because there is a structure in him that is complete and god says i don't walk with men this way if i meet you complete there is nothing much i can do i will have to take away something from you that becomes your point of dependence on me and god called it a blessing i'm showing you how he blessed jacob so when god comes to bless you <laughs> one of the ways he blesses you is hold on he searches for what has been him before his arrival and that becomes what he's going to touch he does not touch it to destroy you he touches it to bless you because two sons depend on abba that's why the bible says in following make sure you only follow them who through faith and patience if you don't find faith in their pursuit and patience run away from them faith means that they had to place their trust on a government and authority higher than them that in following people discern how they got their results did you find somewhere in their equation where they had to depend on god if you don't find it that is a risk so jacob received that blessing that would have called a curse he touched the hollow of his tie and Jacob became incomplete he became destabilized and now he blessed him when he blessed him the Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel he says for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved there are many of you that some of the things that may look like your point of achievement that God touched it was not necessarily the devil it was God luring you to bring you to a deeper place of dependence. To say you've carried the narrative that it only takes a job to do well. Now it's been five years without a job and you've never begged. Have I proven to you that I am Abba enough? The moment the point is proven, he will give you one job that will pay for that five years. To mean that it was not about withholding it. It was about teaching you something. So that in the place of worship, you can throw the job like your alabaster box and still worship. And say, Job, you met me in a relationship with someone. Prosperity, you met me in a relationship with someone. You are only a channel. You cannot be Abba. You see, let me tell you this everything that god gives you i don't know what it is about things and people there is an obsession to be god your job finances opportunities and they will attempt climbing that ladder to sit at the throne of your heart so god designs a system and brings you to a point where nothing you guard it with jealousy no matter what god brings around you you know that dependence is the law of sonship so when god gives you ministry when god gives you anointing when god gives you a voice in the place of worship you tell them do not come beyond this boundary this is me and my father thank you for the gift thank you for the anointing thank you for the fame but i want you to know that the reason why you came was because abba called you so the one who called you is the one my allegiance remains to can i tell you this when you get to a point of total dependence believe me when i tell you this when you get to a point of total dependence god can take someone's prayer request and bring it for you as a reward as a gift and just give it to you and you say god i don't remember praying for this and he says that's what happens when people depend on me back to our story luke chapter 4 is god speaking to someone was that luke chapter 4 the story of the prodigal son luke 15 verse 11 so you can see from this story that there were two sons are we together now 
for as long as they were under the authority of their father certain words were not mentioned number one lack there was no lack provided they were stewards now the boy look at this temptation may it never happen to you in jesus name verse 12 the bible says the young man i don't know who advised him but clearly those who advised him was the one he spent the money with is that true because every time you begin to take the decisions that negate the authority you are under there is another voice sponsoring it when adam fell god came to him in the cool of the day and said adam where art thou and he says i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked next question who told you you have submitted yourself to the influence of another voice so now this young boy probably would go and meet friends and they would tell him shame on you at your age you are still under the authority of your father and make him feel stupid for dependence not knowing that it was his dependence that was responsible for that honor and he went to his father and he said i am tired of having it in your name i want it in my name independence means i want it in my name let the credit for it go to me i am tired of singing a song and they clap for you i am tired of doing exploits and people keep giving you the credit i need to enjoy it too and because you see the character of god is that he gave you a will and he will honor it even at the expense of a man's eternal salvation god will allow him to choose so the father showing the character of god honor that request verse 13 and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and wasted his substance with riotous living the first mention the first decision he's taking in his life outside of the influence of his father was a stupid decision are you seeing that his results were not a proof of his understanding they were a proof of the covering and the authority of his father the first official decision he's taking alone is leading him into trouble the bible is mentioning words that should not have been associated with him waste there are many times when you see us the result is not a true reflection of our intelligence we are hiding behind the wisdom of the ancient of days and our dependence on him makes us to look so wise so when men are clapping for us we know the truth about the story and we can quietly go back and then publicly tell you hey this result is not within the world of men men cannot go this far there is the wisdom of the ancient moving through our frail minds and making it look like it's a product of our creativity can i tell you this master the law of sonship by having the unashamedness to let men know that behind the exploits around your life is the wisdom of the living god is god speaking to someone 14 let's hurry up so we can pray the bible says when he had spent all insufficiency associated to ownership and associated with rebellion for as long as he was with his father there was no mention of these words now he had violated the law of dependence he wanted to feel he was a man not knowing that independence is proof that you are a child he began to be in want what scripture comes to your mind here if the lord is my shepherd i shall not want now look at the way this guy began to deteriorate one decision after another leading him plunging down down again the bible says he went and joined himself so he was really interested in relationships but not with his father in the height of his pain he felt that he would have to go and join himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field oh dear this is a lesson whoever you join yourself with determines what really flows to you he joined himself with his father and the benevolence of the father was on him now he joined himself with a struggling citizen and the man said you met me don't think that things are all right whatever i have i can i will communicate according to my riches and the best i can give you 
is to send you to go and feed the swine he sent him into his field to go and feed the swine 16 and he would fain have filled his belly with the horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him absence of honor you see that now absence of favor because one of the biblical proofs of favor is that your hands will never be empty exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty exodus 3 21 the moment your hands are empty there is an explanation that the favor of god may not be at work in your life back to our story please i hope you love scriptures praise the lord we're learning now so that we'll pray the Bible says no man did give unto him. Now question, where were all the people he spent this with? I can assure you that gentleman must have had a few friends who came around and said, now you are talking. Now that this guy was broke and his life was scattered, the friends found their way. Hmm. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, this is a miracle that must happen to everyone there are times that it's not just the holy spirit that needs to talk to you there are times that it's not about demons a man has the power to come to himself he came to himself and said how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare look at this now the miracle is happening to him and i perish with hunger i will arise hallelujah this gentleman the bible is showing us what happened to him when he went out of sonship and now he's saying i will arise do you know the beautiful thing with this story even in his fallen state he still called his father father i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against heaven and before thee i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your hired servants and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him what a father he never met the father in the house and the father never met him with the pigs they met somewhere at the point of his obedience the love of the father meeting with the obedience and the determination of the son to meet his father as soon as he met the father the father didn't say what is the meaning of this where are you coming from the bible says he embraced him that you have taken the step to be restored to sonship i will honor that effort and he kissed him and restored his symbol of royalty by giving him that signet ring 22 the father said to his servants quickly look how instant it is to experience the blessings of sonship bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet uh-huh and bring hither a fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry please follow the story for my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to marry end of the story of that person now watch another story that many people don't learn anything from are you ready for the next story <laughs> 25 now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh to the house he heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what things this meant what these things meant and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound hear what the brother said and he was angry and would not go in therefore his father we need to appreciate that father you see you see a good father there the father came out and said what is wrong my son and he said no father this is not fair this is not fair he answering said to his father lo 
these many years do I serve you neither transgress I at any time thy commandments hmm. and yet thou never givest me a kid that I may make merry with my friends do you know this is going to lead me to the next thing I'll be teaching you this gentleman was in the house but he was not enjoying the blessings of sonship although he was in the house he didn't go out he did not act his own rebellion but in his mind he was receiving the same consequence as the son the one who left this is not the story of one bad son and one good son this is a story of two sons doing the same thing using different expressions are you getting the lesson now the real hero in the story was the father because the man was angry this guy had friends and they had started speaking to him too just like they spoke to the younger one read it please go back to verse, verse we're, we're almost done <laughs> it says yet thou never gavest me a key that i may go and make merry with my that means the friends had started speaking to him too all the things the younger brother did wrong that led to what he was doing was what was already happening to the elder brother that means if the younger brother's mistake did not lead the father to correct the elder one day the elder would have followed that way too so just because you are in the house does not mean you are safe we need to examine your understanding those who are afar off have already veered off obviously but those who are in are even the ones who are at a greater risk because you can feel that you are in and you are immune whereas in your mind you are not genuinely connected is this a lesson for someone 30 verse 30 please as soon as this thy son was come which had devoured thy living with harlots that means they were getting the reports of all the things you see all the things this man wanted to explore with his life thou hast killed for him a fatted calf 31 two more verses now and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that i have is thine all not some i gave that guy some because you wanted ownership but all that i have is thine 32 it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive was lost and now is found the story of the prodigal son it should be the story of two sons deviated not just the prodigal son two sons both the elder and the younger had the same problem one executed his error the other one was still having his error in process but in a matter of time both of them would have done the same thing the story is that none of them maximized the potential that came with their being in such a benevolent father's house not the one who left nor the one who stayed truly enjoyed the blessings of fatherhood are we together very powerful there is a principal blessing that follows sonship there are many but there is one principal blessing that follows sonship is called inheritance inheritance is the reward of two sons psalm 133 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity verse 2 it says it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed even aaron's bed and went down to his garments are you seeing it now so from the head of aaron it is going down to other parts of the body connected to him inheritance inheritance is a very powerful concept we know this and we understand this so powerfully in africa many people understand the concept of inheritance where a man is able to will whether possessions to will whatever it is that makes you an extension of that person it's called inheritance inheritance ephesians 1 and verse 11 the reception of possessions the reception of traits 
the receptions of genetic qualities or whatever quality that makes you able to, repre to, to replicate and then to become an extension of your father is called an inheritance. The Bible says, Ephesians 1 verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who walketh all things after the counsel of his own will. The Bible says we have obtained an inheritance. Can I tell you, the chief inheritance that we received in Christ is the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written in that Mosaic law that cursed is the man that hangs upon a tree. Is that true? That the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the principal inheritance that God gives men is not money. The principal inheritance, please listen carefully, that God gives sons is not cars and houses and all of these things. In fact, any father that gives you anything physical alone really did not give you an inheritance. Read your Bible. In allocating his inheritance, Abraham gave his other sons with, um, what's her name now? Keturah about six sons he gave them physical things estates possessions but to isaac he did not give any he released something on him and said go so when an inheritance is physical is the least form of inheritance god gave us his best the spirit of the living god that is the inheritance that we have received today the spirit of adoption can i tell you this that the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a man is what makes that you are able to walk in the fullness of your sonship. Now, please lend me the next five to ten minutes and let's discuss the power that is contained in sonship. Now that we understand that sonship can be by natural descent or by adoption, now that we understand that sonship involves your relationship between the father who is abba source sustainer defender protector and the son now that you understand that there are demands to sonship the demand first and foremost of followership the demand of total dependence in fact i omitted one you may want to write the demand of honor honor there is no true sonship without honor to the father from malachi chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible says a son honoreth his father you may want to just write it down and we said the principal blessing that follows sonship is inheritance 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 in this case for the believer our real inheritance is what the bible calls the blessing now many people have called the blessing many things and I, I understand from the perspectives but what the Bible really calls the blessing is the Holy Spirit. It's beyond an anointing. It is literally the Holy Spirit. He is the blessing. It is from him. The hymn writer says praise God from whom all blessings from that the blessing would come every other blessing. The wisdom of God, the creativity, the power, and all of these things. But God wants us to walk in the fullness of sonship. In fact, the Bible says that the earnest expectation of creation, that they are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Another version says creation is waiting for God to reveal who his sons truly are. Hallelujah. Yes. When Jesus said he came from the father they said that means he was trying to say he was exactly the same thing with the father because whatever is in abba through followership through dependence and through honor will eventually find expression in the son is that true when elisha carried the mantle of elijah he went to the jordan and he said where is the lord god of elijah and the sea parted hither and thither. And the prophet said, Surely the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of the Lord. When I began my journey with God, please pay attention now. I read through scripture and I read through history. I'm a student of Bible history. I'd love to know what God did in the past so that we can position ourselves to be mightily used by God. And I saw that many people captured in history, men and women alike, got to points in their lives where they were marvelously used by God. It seemed as though in every generation you would find people generally just loving the Lord and then you would find a few people who would become unique expressions of the divine life in power, in grace, manifesting the multifaceted possibilities of the Christ to a degree that was commendable. And I wanted to know what was the secret behind these people. I studied I read materials I read the Bible I didn't want to live an ordinary life not just for the purpose of flesh and all of that I really wanted to do something with my life that would count and I found a secret that for the next five minutes I'll be sharing with you and then we'll pray can you pray in the spirit in one minute